everybody! How are you? Welcome to Mondays with Mark. I'm Mark, and this is Smokey Stephen Mark. Oh, yes it is. Ah! Welcome or welcome back. Oh, if you're new, welcome. It is so great to see you for real. Hey, take some time and check out the channel. We have a ton of content, let me tell you, okay? And be sure to subscribe so you know when we have another video coming out. And if you're joining me again, welcome back. It is fantastic, fantastic to see you. Seriously, it means the world that you that you take the time to spend some time with me. It really, really does. So thank you very much. And we have a fantastic episode tonight. Yes, we do. We are going to go in the kitchen and make a today's leches cake. I'm super stoked. I have to tell you, this is probably one of my most favorite cakes of all time. And if you've never had one, you got to try it. You really, really, really do. Okay. Now we're kind of doing this. We're going to make this cake kind of like in celebration of, of, of Cinco de Mayo, right? Which is this Wednesday. Oh, yes! And Cinco de Mayo is a traditional Mexican holiday that has a fascinating history. It really does. But even more fascinating than that is the fact that it's actually more popular here in the U.S. than it is in Mexico now. It's, it's crazy, right? So, I have to admit... I didn't know too much about Cinco de Mayo, right? I mean, I just thought it was an excuse to drink tequila in the daytime, wear a sombrero, and uh, eat some tacos, right? No, it, 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 it's much, much more than that. So I decided to educate myself. So I did a little sleuthing, and I found out the true story. And that's how we know that we are celebrating, you know, the customs of a, a, behind a holiday rather than just kind of appropriating it, right? So, you know, I just kind of wanted to do my little part not to reinforce inaccurate stereotypes, if you know what I mean, right? All right, so this is what I found out. Check it out. You know, many people outside of Mexico mistakenly think that Cinco de Mayo is a celebration of Mexico's independence, and that couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, that actually happened some 50 years earlier. Now, Independence Day in Mexico is celebrated on September 16th, and that is the anniversary of the revolutionary priest Miguel Hidalgo Castella's famous Cry of Doralis. Now, that refers to the city of Doralis, Hidalgo, Mexico. Uh, this was a call to arms that amounted to a declaration of war against the Spanish colonial, colonial government, and that would be in 1810. Now, Cinco de Mayo, on the other hand, or the 5th of May, is a holiday that celebrates the date of the Mexican Army's May 5th, 1862 victory over France at the Battle of Puebla during the Franco-Mexican War. Mm. The day, which falls on Wednesday this year, this Wednesday, actually, is also known as Battle of Puebla Day. Now, Puebla is just one of Mexican's 31 states, and within Mexico, Cinco de Mayo is primarily observed in that state, okay? Although other parts of the country also take part in this celebration. And traditions can include military parades, recreations of the Battle of Puebla, lots of food and festive events. But for many Mexicans, however... It's just a day like any other. It's not a national holiday, so offices, banks, and stores do remain open. So, in 1862, during the time of the Battle of Pueblo in Mexico, the United States was engaged in its own civil war. Cinco de Mayo was first celebrated here in the U.S. in Southern California in 1863 as a show of solidarity with Mexico against French rule. Now, fast forward a little bit. After the Mexican Civil War in 1915, many Mexican people came to the United States and settled in the southern states. And when they came with them, they brought their customs, their traditions, and their holidays. 
including Cinco de Mayo. Pretty interesting, huh? <sighs> I mean, I'd say so. I mean, I think it's pretty interesting anyway. I don't know. What do you think? Ah, if you've been watching for any amount of time, you know that I, uh, I do like interesting facts and trivia, and I do try to find the true story behind things, you know, especially if I'm going to make a video about it, you know, I know, be it a holiday or, or a product or anything, really, I, I, I just think it's important, like I said before, you know, just to kind of, like, you know, honor a custom or the truth behind something, you know, rather than just kind of like celebrating the, um, the stereotype of it, if that makes sense, you know, but, uh, I do do a lot of digging for things, don't I? I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's not annoying, but, um, because I'm sure there's going to be more of it. Ah! And that was the, uh, that was the real story behind Cinco de Mayo. And we are going to go into the kitchen and make a Tres leches cake. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I do have some fun, interesting information about the cake, too. But we'll do that later, okay? Let's go into the kitchen, okay? Okay, so we are in the kitchen, and we are about to make a tres leches cake, and I'm super stoked. It's one of my, it's one of my favorite cakes in the whole world, let me tell you. And it's probably the moistest cake you'll ever have, right? Or the most moistest cake you'll ever have. Or the most moist, or the... It's a really moist cake, okay? Just trust me, trust me. So let's get started, okay? So a tres leches cake is essentially a sponge cake that is soaked with a, with a combination of three milks. I mean, that's basically what it is, all right? And uh, we want to begin by prepping everything. So first, we have our oven preheated to 350 degrees, and we have a 13 by 9 inch baking dish, which we have sprayed quite well with some baking spray, okay? All right, you can also use a quarter sheet pan for this recipe as well. Um, we're gonna serve our cake right out of the pan, so if you have one of those real decorative ones, you know, those 13 by nines that like have flowers on it or something, use that because it'll just tie in so nicely. Do you believe I don't have one? No, this is the closest one I have to a nice looking one. So, mm, I think I better uh, keep my eye out for one. Now, this is a three bowl recipe, so you will need three bowls to do this, okay? So, let's get started. In the first bowl here, I have one cup of all-purpose flour, and then I have one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. In addition to that, we have about a quarter teaspoon of salt, and we're just going to whisk that all together, just like so and we're gonna set it aside. Now, in our next two bowls, we have five large eggs. In one, we have just the yolks, and in the other, we have just the whites, all right? And we're gonna concentrate on our egg yolks right now, okay? So, in this bowl with our egg yolks in it, we're gonna wanna use a hand mixer, and we're gonna beat that. Oh, great, our oven is ready. Fabulous. Okay, and we're gonna beat that until it's nice and creamy. Right, looking good. All right, now to that, we're going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar, and we're going to add that in two parts. We're just going to add a little bit, and we're going to give it a mix. And then we're going to add the rest. Now, at this point, we're going to want to beat this mixture until it's a very pale yellow, okay? All right. So that's what we're looking for. Nice. Okay, to this mixture, we're going to add one and a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're going to add a half a cup of whole milk, just like so. And then we're just going to mix it on low speed until it's combined. All right. <laughs> Looks good. Very cool. All right. So now we're going to get our dry ingredients. I'm going to place it right next to our wet ingredients there. And now we are going to 
Combine the two. And make sure you use a spatula here because you want to get all that goodness in there. Oh, yes, we do. Okay, perfect. Very cool. All right, and now we're just going to combine the two. We're just going to lightly mix it together until it's all combined. Nice. All right. Looking good. Perfect. All right. So let's move on to our egg whites. So we have our five egg whites in our bowl ready to go. And you want to get yourself a quarter cup of sugar ready as well. Now with a hand mixer, we are going to whip our egg whites until they're nice and creamy. Okay. All right. All right, very nice. Okay, now at this point, add our sugar. Okay, and now we're going to continue to whip this uh, until nice stiff peaks form, okay? All right. Nice. We got some peaks going on here. Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> oh, you gotta make it fun, right? Okay. So let's set this aside here and get all of our goodness off of our meters. All right. So now we are going to take our whipped egg mixture. And essentially what we did here was we just creamed together egg whites and sugar. But this is going to give us um, a nice lift to our cake. This gives us our sponge in the sponge cake, okay? All right, so we're going to add it to our wet mixture, okay? And we're gonna do it in thirds, all right? So we're gonna put a little bit in like this and gently fold it in, okay? Just like so. And then we're gonna repeat with the second third, like so. Perfect. And then the last third. Very nice. Ooh, look at that sponge batter. Very nice. <laughs> okay, so now we pour it right into our baking pan like so. There we go. Get all that goodness in there. Okay. And then we're going to smooth it out to make it nice and even. Just like so. And now we bake. So we are going to want to bake our cake in a 350 degree oven for about 30 to 40 minutes until a toothpick put in the center of it comes out nice and clean, okay? All right, then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna let it cool completely, okay? So we have, what, about a half hour or so to kill? Um, how about the origins of the Tres Leches cake? Oh man, it has an interesting origin. I guess not really, because actually, nobody really knows the origin of the Today's Late Chase Cake. Some people say it comes from Nicaragua, some people say it comes from Mexico. But nobody really knows. Now, some people through the years have stood up and said, hey, you know, it was me. But no tangible proof could be found. Mm -mm. Sorry, guys. Um, fast forward a few years, and then the recipe was found on the side of a can of sweetened condensed milk. That milk was called La Lachera. Oh, yes. And Lachera actually means... Milk Lady, as you can see from the logo, mm -hmm. it depicts a woman with a pot of milk on her head. Now, this sweetened condensed milk was manufactured by Nestle, and they printed the recipe on the side of their can as a way to generate sales for their sweetened condensed milk, and it worked. The company reported a huge increase in sales of their sweetened condensed milk. Hmm, pretty interesting. So, I don't know. Whatever you choose to believe, one thing there is proof of. The Tres Leches cake 
is super delicious. Oh, yes, it is. All right, I guess I talked enough, and now my oven's all cold, so I gotta rewarm it up again, and oh, this is always something, right? All right, I'll see you in a couple minutes. Oh. Okay, so our cake is in the oven, and it is baking, so we have a couple minutes, so let's talk filling, all right? So, a tres leches cake, tres leches meaning three milk cake, which... When you think about it, I'm not sure why it's called three milks, because when you think about it, we do have three milks in our filling, yes, but there's also whole milk in the cake itself, and then if you add the whipped topping on top, that's five cakes. So what would that be? Cinco leches? Yeah, I guess it doesn't fall off the top. Anyway, let's make the filling, all right? So the filling consists of three different milks, okay? So in this bowl, I have one can of sweetened condensed milk, which is 14 ounces. And to that, we're going to add one can of evaporated milk. Now that will be 12 ounces. To that, we're gonna add one half of a cup of heavy whipping cream. Oh yeah. And one teaspoon of vanilla. Oh, yes. And then we're just going to whisk it together, okay, until it makes a nice syrup. Okay. And that is perfect. And that is all there is to the filling. Now, we want to keep this refrigerated until we use it next, okay? So, while I was looking around for my milks, guess what I found? I have a little cute sample size of the La Lachata, which is, as you may remember, I just told you, uh, Nestle's version of sweetened condensed milk. See, there's the little lady we talked about. <laughs> Very cool. Y'all, sweetened condensed milk is so delicious. I know people who use it in their coffee. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. he does. It's delicious in, in coffee. It really is. I know people that add it to their cereal and milk, and it also makes a great topping for ice cream. Super, super delicious. Definitely a fan of sweetened condensed milk. All right, let's check our cake. Okay, so... We took the cake out of the oven and we let it cool completely and it's ready to go. Oh yeah. Okay, so when you first take it out of the oven, your cake is going to be to the top of the pan, maybe even over the pan, and as it cools, it will shrink down to this size, okay? So now we have our filling ready to go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take a fork and we're going to poke our cake. Yes, you guys, this is probably the very, very first original poke cake. I don't know. I'm willing to bet that it is. I mean, this cake has been around forever, so I don't know. We'll see. Either way, it's much, much better than the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the jello ones, you know what I'm saying? I mean, no offense, but I'm just saying. All right, so we got a little poked up there. All right, so now we're gonna take our filling, okay? Our syrup, our filling. Some people call it a soak. Some people call it a filling. Some people call it, you know what? I call it the crap we're gonna pour over the cake. All right, let's just go with that. <laughs> and we are. We're just going to pour it all over our cake, just like so. And you're gonna use all of it up it's going to come all the way up to the top. Cover the cake. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. And that's what you want it to look like. Now, you're probably thinking that there's probably, you know, maybe too much liquid in there. But trust me, that's all going to be absorbed up into the cake. All right. So now what we're going to do is cover it with uh, some plastic wrap, or if you have a handy dandy little lid like this, you're gonna cover it up and we're gonna keep this chilled. Now, here's the hard part, okay? Fight the urge, fight the urge, please. We need this to soak, we need this to rest, okay? So, preferably we wanna let this uh, rest overnight, okay? So we're gonna wanna chill it and let it sit overnight. Now, if you're a little impatient, just promise me at least two hours, okay? Let it sit for at least two hours chilled, okay? But 
but overnight would be better, okay? All right. So let me let me let me chill this and um well, I'm not going to make you wait 24 hours. So maybe I'll activate the time machine. Okay. Let's do it. All right, and we are back, and it is the next day. I let our cake soak for about eight hours, I guess. Check it out. Oh, yes, nice. How about that? So, you know, it sopped up all of that liquid right up into the cake, and that is exactly what we want. So, now it's time to frost. Yes. Oh, so yes. Now traditionally, uh, Trey's Late Chase Cake it has a whipped cream frosting, and that's what we're going to do today. Now, to make a traditional whipped cream frosting, you would take about a pint of heavy whipping cream. Now, this is a quart. You want about half of that, okay? All right. And you want to add three tablespoons of sugar to that, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Put that all in a bowl and, and, and whip the heck out of it, okay? And then you will have a whipped cream frosting for your cake. But I'm going to share with you a product that I use um, and really, really love. I've talked about it before. It's Rich's Whip. Um, you can find this in the frozen section of most larger grocery stores, okay? And... Um, uh, that's what we're going to use today, all right? And it's done exactly the same way. We just pour this into a bowl and whip it until we have whipped cream. The difference is, is we don't have to add sugar. We don't have to add vanilla. It's all ready to go right in here. Now, the pros of using uh, Rich's Whip is, well, there's a few of them, actually. First of all, um, it it has a longer shelf life. Like, it will stay fresh a lot longer than traditional whipped cream will, okay? And it also, it's so much better for shrinkage. Yep, shrinkage. And what I mean is, if we make this cake and we want to keep it and maybe serve it the next day or we're not going to eat it up all right away, um, traditional whipped cream has a tendency to, like, deflate very, very quickly, right? That will not happen with Rich's Whip. I mean... Who likes anything that shrinks, right? I mean, right? I mean, well, you know. So that's a great benefit of this uh, product as well, all right? So I have my bowl here with a pint of Rich's whipped in there, and I have it whipped up, and it's all nice and ready to go. So it's as easy as this, y'all. We're going to put a nice, thick layer of whipped cream right on top of our cake. Yep. Like, I have seen today's leche's cake with, like, more whipped cream topping than, like, the size of the cake itself, right? And I think that's the best way to go. I really do. All right, look at that. Oh, yeah. Okay, All right. finishing it up here. I'm just adding a little bit of texture for some fun. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we are almost ready to go. So let's talk garnish. Garnish, probably my favorite part of this whole process. Oh, yes. Okay. So what do we have here? We have some fresh strawberry, which I have sliced. And check it out. We have some fresh mango too. Oh yeah. And then also some fresh mint leaves like right from the garden. Okay. Now I took my sliced fruit and I put them into little um, containers here. And then I added about two tablespoons of sugar and just gave them a quick little stir. Okay. And it's as simple as this. Let's start with our mango here. Okay. So we're going to put our mango there. Now I'm going to do this probably in, I guess we'll do 12 slices in this cake. So we're going to do 12 little garnishes here. Let's put our strawberry on there and then let's, let's see here. Yeah, let's do this. We'll finish it off with a nice piece of mint and you are ready to go. <laughs> there we have it. Ah, nice. All right, and there we have our today's leche cake. Not too shabby, huh? Now, we can serve this right out of the container as we need it and definitely keep it refrigerated for storage, okay? And this will last up to four days in the fridge, okay? But I doubt, I doubt that it'll last that long, okay? And there we have it for today. Our tres leches cake in honor of Cinco de Mayo. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Uh, I think I'm gonna dig into it. I can't wait. Oof, that was fun. Oh yes. Oh, I I'm t I. I cannot, I told you before, this is one of my favorite cakes in the world, and I, I don't make it that often, you know, so I'm so glad we had a chance to make it today, and I know what's for dessert tonight, oh, oh, okay, put it over there, don't look at it anymore, <laughs> So I guess that's all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed our time together tonight. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the cake too. I hope you give it a try. And uh, so, I don't know. I guess I don't have anything else to say. I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope you remember to do something nice for yourself. You know, like maybe bake a cake or something. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> but remember, remember, always stay safe. Stay well, but above all else, stay positive, y'all. All right, I'll see you next time. Ciao! Oh, cake. Oh.